Hey guys, so it's time for some real talk. Flaky friends, we all hate them. You know, it got me thinking lately that we seem to have these people in our lives a lot and it really bugs me. I'm sure that it bugs you as well. I'm sure you've heard a million excuses from every single friend, canceling last minute, preventing you from doing something else with your time because you planned out a lot of time for someone or someone making some kind of lame excuse when really you're their plan B and their plan A kind of came around or their plan A fell through and you're their plan B. No one wants to be someone else's plan B, right? Oh yeah. Even flaky people, when they get into relationships with someone else, so if you have a, a friend that just, you know, is going through the honeymoon phase with their new boyfriend or girlfriend or partner or whoever, and they kind of start skipping out on a routine that you guys have had or skipping out on a lot of things to really sacrifice that time with you, that's the worst. <laughs> I don't know about you, but I'm a pretty busy person. So when I decide to make time for someone, I expect them to do the same. And that's probably my number one problem is that I have pretty high expectations for myself. And therefore, when they're not reciprocated by someone else, it hurts, really. It, it, it becomes kind of offensive. And, and I feel like kind of rude and just very selfish on their part. The reality of all of this is that I think we need to reset some of our expectations, but also understand that people in our lives sometimes are going to have other priorities. And for myself, I can't speak to you guys, but I really try to be as courteous as possible. So when I make plans with someone, I really make plans with someone. I'm gonna be there from eight o'clock to 12 o'clock, or I'm gonna be there from 10 to six, because I just feel like that is a common courtesy. Now, some of you might disagree with that, and obviously there's circumstances that happen with those things where people get sick, they have family emergencies, they have last minute things they need to attend to. Cool, I get it, totally understand. However, when that increases our frequency and cadence, then that becomes a problem. You know, if every single time I'm reaching out to you for plans and then you cancel last minute, friendship is a two-way street, right? You can pick up the phone and call me. You can arrange another time to hang out together. And it's just really rude and very inconsiderate, actually, when people do that. They take liberties with your time, like you can get it back when you can't. Time is finite and it's the most important resource we have on the planet, uh, in my opinion, besides money, I guess. But it's something to be valued and cherished. And I really hope that some of you learn from some of the things that I'm going to say about flaky friends. And just understand that you probably deserve better than the friends that are going to flake out on you. Yes, there's going to be some times where you need to be patient with people and considerate. And I usually try to do like a three strike rule. Um, so if someone flakes on me and it's like one time, well, you know what? Let's calm down the anxiety. <laughs> Let's calm down some of the expectations and all that kind of stuff. Second time it happens, usually I'll let them know and I'll say, hey, this is how it's making me feel. Last time you dipped, this time you dipped as well. This seems to be becoming a pattern. Honestly, if you don't want to hang out, just say so. It's cool, right? No harm, no foul. Third time, I probably need to have a pretty serious conversation with them. Uh, if someone can do that three times to me after kind of knowing that that bugs me, then they're probably not a good friend to begin with. What you need to understand about people, and this is something that I found out the hard way, is that good people in your life will invest as much time into you as you 
into them. That's reciprocation, right? And it's a two-way street. If they are a friend out of convenience, for example, you're the only person in their friend group that drives a car and they need a lift somewhere, or you have access to some kind of skills, or even worse, money, and I've seen that all the time, they're probably not your friends. I remember when I was in university, I went to school with a bunch of very, very rich kids. And I'm talking, I'm not talking like typical middle class, upper middle class, like, hey, you know a couple rich people that live in like bigger houses. I'm like talking about owning like chains of gas stations in Saudi Arabia, kind of rich, right? Like their parents were gonna buy them a resort or a hotel for them to manage after school was finished or like, hey, do you want to start like a new restaurant chain in Miami? Like, here's the money to do that. I'll invest in the land and everything like that. I'm talking that level of rich. And I remember uh, this one guy, super nice guy. I'll just name him Aaron. <laughs> His real name's not Aaron, but let's say it's Aaron. And I remember Aaron, super wealthy guy, always liked to go out to party. He was really nice to me all the time, honestly. Never had a problem with him. And he was in the same class as me and everything like that. There was one week where it was graduation week and he always rented cars. He was just, the, you know, kept flaunting his cash all the time. I guess that's how he was brought up. And I guess I don't totally blame him. You know, that's, <laughs> that's how he was brought up. I remember Aaron rented a limo for a bunch of people to go party. We were gonna go over to the next city or they, I should say, not, not myself, but they were gonna go over to the next city to go to a club. So he was running late. All his friends were, were there, friends. And they went to the club in, in the limo that he rented. Obviously the limo cost him, you know, probably like a thousand bucks or something like that for the night. He had uh, reserved a VIP area, right? And his friends were, one by one, would get seated in the VIP lounge. And I had a friend that went there, but she was different from everyone else. She kind of, I guess, kind of understood right from wrong. And she didn't want to take advantage of this guy. So one by one, the waitress would come around. And like most clubs, you have table service, you know, when you go into a VIP lounge. So this waitress would come around and would literally ask people one by one, hey, what would you like to drink? And every single person on that table except my friend let's call her deborah would answer oh we are just waiting for aaron okay that's weird next person we're just waiting for aaron strange next person we're just waiting for aaron they were literally all waiting for aaron to get there to whip out his credit card it was the saddest thing and i remember declining his offer because i knew that something like this would end up being that way and i particularly wanted to make sure that he understood that we were friends because of a friendship because he was a nice guy and i was friends with him for the quality of person that he was to me not because he rented, you know, CLKs and SL500s, you know, every weekend and rented Hummers every weekend to drive people around. I can't tell you how many times that I've met him, at, you know, seen him at the club and he was like, oh, how's it going? You know, half drunk here, I'll buy you a bottle, I'll buy you two, you know, hey, whatever, and, you know, hey, do you need a ride home? Blah, 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 you know, let me get you a cab, you know, refused it all. That's something that I'm really proud of myself for doing because I could have gone in a very, very slippery slope and just used all this money. A few inches later. Fast forward after graduation, I think his parents hit some financial trouble at that time. They had to pump the brakes a little bit. They were by no means poor, but I think that they saw his spending skyrocket and maybe they hit some bad times with, I don't know, their multiple gas stations in the Middle East or whatever. And so they made a call to Aaron and told him, hey, you gotta pump the brakes a little bit on spending. And so he had to tell his friends that. And guess what happened? His friends vanished. His crew of 16 people 
went down to four. And those four people were still living under his roof. After we graduated, we moved out of the dorms. He rented a place in town and they were living off of him. Instead of going out to eat at a fancy, you know, Michelin three-star restaurants all the time, they were relegated or downgraded to pizza. And <laughs> that was, <laughs> they were even complaining about that, which was crazy. So yeah, I mean, that was one of the experiences that was just so bizarre uh, for myself growing up in like a very North Americanized middle class to lower middle class community. You know, I never, I don't think I've ever had a friend that was ultra rich like that and really experienced that kind of behavior where people would just start to like morph the way that they would conduct themselves around Aaron. You know, you talk about flaky friends and, and people being loyal to you. Just make sure that they're loyal to you for the right reasons and make sure that you're loyal to them for the right reasons as well. You know, it's, I think, unfortunately, the sad truth is sometimes when you're younger, you don't, you almost have this euphoric outlook on life and on everyone that's out there. You think that they all have good intentions and, and everything. And I'm not saying that people have, you know, inherently bad intentions, but there are definitely some bad people out there. And for myself, anyways, I've learned throughout life how to lead certain people. There was no net benefit. Um, their behavior after a certain amount of time really just dictated that they didn't deserve a place in my life and deserved my time. So I hope you do the same and really start to evaluate who you spend time with. I think that's a really important thing that I've learned in my later years. But uh, yeah, I, I wish that was a lesson that I knew earlier in my life because that's such a crucial thing. It really shapes who you are as a person. Not only that, but like I was highlighting before, time is a finite resource. If something's taught us, I guess if these last two years has taught us anything about life, life can be super, super short. Please go out there and make the most of your time. I am certainly tired filming this video today on Sunday, but you know what? I don't care because I'm gonna make the most out of my evening to try to produce some really good content for you guys. Hopefully this comes up well and um, I'm hoping that you get some advice from this. So I think the moral of the story really is invest in people as much as they invest in you. And people that don't invest in you or sacrifice some of their time for you like you sacrifice for them, you should probably reevaluate whether or not they deserve a position in your life. That's it for me today, guys. Hopefully you liked this episode of Real Talk. I know that this one was probably a little bit more unorthodox compared to the original ones, but I want to change the format around to try out something new and speak a little more from the heart and the head as well. So hopefully that came out a little more organically than formulaic. Thanks so much for watching guys. If you haven't already, please like, comment, subscribe, and ring that notification bell to find out when new episodes hit. We post videos every uh, Monday, Wednesday, Friday. I'd love to hear in the comments below from you guys as to what kind of flaky friend experiences you've had and how that's affected you. Maybe how you've gotten out of it as well. I think that would be important for people on this channel. Ultimately, we're trying to, you know, save the world one click at a time. So if you could share this video with someone that you care about that could benefit from this information, that would always be great. Thank you so much again, guys, and I'll see you on the next episode. Take care.